For this next set of demonstrations, I'm going to move to the millimeter uh, wave range. And the first thing I'm going to measure is a W band down converter. And then the next thing I'm going to measure is a uh, V band up converter. So we'll get two converter measurements in one demonstration. I promise you some millimeter wave uh, mixer phase noise measurements. So what I've got here is a millimeter wave uh, W band down converter. So uh, in from 75 to 110, the output signal here is from 6 to 41 gigahertz. It's got an internal oscillator at 69 gigahertz, which is locked to the 10 megahertz reference. This is uh, one of the millimeter heads port 4 from my N5290 millimeter wave network analyzer. And let's look at the measurement here. You can see that I've set up a spectrum analyzer measurement, and I've set port 4 to be in millimeter mode, so I can measure the input signal at minus, or at uh, 100 gigahertz, and you can see I'm driving at minus 17 dBm, that's the maximum input. The uh, output signal here is at minus 7 dBm. This uh, B receiver, port 2, is being used in the non-millimeter mode, because it has a little more sensitivity. And uh, you can see there's lots of spurs coming out of this mixer as well, so it's not completely spur-free. I also set up a phase noise measurement. In fact, I set up two channels of phase noise measurement. The blue trace is measuring the phase noise of my 100 gigahertz signal, and the yellow trace is measuring the phase noise of the 31 gigahertz output signal. So this is essentially measuring, in effect, the phase noise of the internal local oscillator. It's uh, got quite a few spurs, so I might want to turn on the spur table and spurious analysis so I can enable the spur table, say OK, and turn on the spur table. I can see all the spurs that show up in this system. Uh, this is set up to show the spurs from highest power to lowest power. We can also set up the spurs to show from uh, lowest frequency to highest frequency. So. That last uh, demonstration was for a millimeter wave down converter. Now I've got a millimeter wave up converter, so I'm driving this with uh, 22 gigahertz. I'm using a local oscillator. It's a little difficult to see here, but the local oscillator is actually coming in this port 4, and I've coupled it over so I can read the phase noise of the input signal, and that's coming from that PSG I previously measured. So I know it has a phase noise profile uh, that I can uh, measure independently. And finally, the output signal comes out and goes directly into port 2, so I get my most signal to noise. We always want to make my receiver level as high as I can. Uh, I did a quick measurement of the conversion gain, so this is showing the conversion gain of minus 9 dB for this converter. It's a pretty good converter. Uh, this is showing the output spectrum coming out of the converter. There is the 22 gigahertz input signal. Remember, my LO is 40, so I have a signal up here at 62 and a half. And I have another signal down here at 17 and a half, which is the negative side. And finally, the interesting thing we want to see is the phase noise. So this is the measurement of the phase noise at 62 and a half gigahertz. The blue trace that we can see here is the me measurement on port 4, you can see B4, of the 40 gigahertz LO. And so you can see, really, it tracks almost identically the LO. The blue trace is a measurement that I set up in a third channel where I have the 62, I turned on my 62 and a half gigahertz source. And so the purple trace is a combination of the phase noise of the source and the phase noise of my LO. So I know my floor should be lower than this. And uh, it is limited in power level. So out here at the far offset region, I'm probably power level limited in measuring it. Um, and finally, just for uh, fun, I measured here in this last one the measurement of the input signal to the converter, so I'm measuring the phase noise of the signal going into the converter at 22 gigahertz. And what this really illustrates is that the measurement I make for phase noise until I get to the noise floor is identically matching the phase noise of the local oscillator from that PSG. And you can get an idea of how much noise floor I've lost is I'm at minus 4 dBm as the power into my receiver directly. If I uh, was at around plus 12 or plus 15 dBm, so about 20 dB higher, that would start to overload the receiver. So if I had a little higher signal coming out of my mixer or added a booster amplifier, I could probably drive this down another 20 dB.
So that illustrates two millimeter wave mixer measurements, and I'll tell you the configuration of these is really quite simple. You just hook the mixer up as though you were making a regular mixer measurement and turn on the phase noise measurement.